By listening to this video, you agree to the terms located at HelenMcConnell.com slash disclaimer. Hi everybody, it's Helen McConnell and it's um, kind of late in the evening on a Wednesday and I wanted to do this follow-up video that I promised because I know some of you are waiting for it because you told me. So this is the follow-up to the shame video that I did and this is about how to release old stories. I think they go together so well because shame keeps us stuck in our old stories. It'll keep us as if we, as if our feet are in cement blocks, you know, or um, we want to move forward, but we can't move forward. Shame is like we've got one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake. It's hard on the engine and you're not going to get anywhere. So do the shame video and see what comes up. And then I want to tell you about how to identify and release old stories. And when I say stories, I'm not talking about fairy tales that your mother told you or Dr. Seuss stories, not those kinds of stories. I'm talking about essentially what you tell yourself about yourself in the world and what you tell other people about yourself because those things are so powerful. Old stories sound like limitations. They sound something like this. I'm afraid of conflict because when I was a kid, my dad was always angry and it scared me or it made me uncomfortable, something like that. So I'm afraid of conflict. Another way old stories sound something like this. Everyone in my family gets diabetes. Another common old story sounds something like this. I'm not very smart, so I might as well not try for that job or that school. The I'm not very smart part is an announcement that isn't true. Hang on, I'm going to explain all this. Another story might be, when I was in kindergarten, they told me, fill in the blank, and I've been doing it ever since, or I've been living that ever since. And this, the stories that we learned, we didn't always learn through verbalization. They might have been uh, nonverbal stories, but a lot of times they have some some words that we heard that go with them. When I hear somebody say, I'm afraid of, fill in the blank, something like, I'm afraid of commitment, I'm afraid of being vulnerable, I'm afraid of being abandoned, I'm afraid of being alone, I'm afraid of being with someone, people don't really like me, things like that. Those are old stories and it's time for them to change. I want you to think of these stories as information and instructions that we're giving to ourselves. So if you keep saying, I'm this or I'm that or I'm not very this or I'm not very that, your mind and your body gets the message. And basically your mind and your body say, I, I. If that's what you want, we will not only make that seem real, we will deny any evidence to the contrary. I hear people say, things uh, often and I've used to do this too so I get it when they say I always fill in the blank and I say is that true do you always do that well not always sometimes I don't okay but we keep telling ourselves I always do this and therefore it's difficult to acknowledge or I even notice any evidence to the contrary these stories and all the evidence that you've used to defend them are just stories. And I realize truly that some of you may have been abused, um, uh, neglected, and had horrible experiences growing up, but those things aren't happening anymore. So let's get the healing we need so we don't have to live from that place, from that place, uh, that event, that trauma, that story that was frozen in our system, frozen in time, and we've been carrying with us ever since. Let's change that, okay? These are things that happened in the past, and I realize they may have left you scarred and scared and attached to the emotion that went with the story. But notice, just notice what happens when you begin to change the story consciously. Of course, it might not feel true at first, but it will become true eventually, especially when we add tapping. Here's an example. Start by feeling what happens when you say, I'm not very smart? Just notice how that feels in your body and in your mind. And then I want you to compare the difference when you say, what if I'm smarter than I've been led to believe? 
What if I'm smarter than I think I am? What if this is just a story they taught me? What if I haven't realized my own brilliance because I've been saying I'm not very smart? What if my intelligence isn't classic intelligence? Or you might even want to say, what if it's not true that I'm not very smart? Or what if I can learn the things I want to learn? What if I have a different kind of intelligence? Notice the difference in your body and your mind as you try on these what ifs and maybe I and maybe it's not true. Just say, what if it's not true? So notice, just notice the difference in these phrases. I have such a hard time losing weight. What if it doesn't have to be so hard? What if it could be easier? What if I could feel safe losing weight? What if losing weight isn't about what I think it is? What if I'm different? Or try this. I am so unorganized. And what if you just switch that around to, I'm learning how to be more organized. Or I've been unorganized for a long time, but that's going to start changing. Or I can learn how to be organized. Or what if I'm healing all the wounds that have kept me unorganized? There are so many ways we can begin to change this story. And all you have to do is make the suggestion to your mind. The same way that these stories got in there. Make a new story. Make a new suggestion. When you first learn these stories about yourself, there usually was emotion attached to it. So if you can bring up the emotion and pop in a new story, it's going to take hold that much faster. And, as always, I recommend tapping. All right? So you can say, what if I'm not really that unorganized? What if I know how to be organized? What if I've organized things before? What if I could get more organized? I don't have to do it all at once. What if I could get organized a little bit at a time? I wonder how different my life will be when I start getting more organized. I love being organized. Okay, take a breath. And just notice when you tap and say those things, they go in even faster. All right, because we're... we're kind of like opening up our nervous system and our subconscious mind and our conscious mind and our soul all at once, lining them all up, tapping and putting in these new phrases while we let the old ones out. Somewhere in this process of learning this story about yourself that isn't true, someone took your power away. Could have been a parent, caregiver, uh, step-sibling, sibling, grandparent, teacher. Someone took your power away. And I think it's time for you to get it back. Now, taking your power back doesn't mean arguing with someone or having a fight with them. It's an inside job to get your power back and choose to no longer believe these stories. That's a powerful experience. That's a powerful choice. Tell yourself some new stories. So the key to telling yourself new stories is to, number one, catch yourself when you tell the old story. Just interrupt. If, if you go somewhere and you say to somebody, oh, it's so hard for me to, and fill in the blank, whatever you say that's hard, it's so hard, I have such a hard time, blah, blah, blah. Quit telling yourself that story. We've got to change the story. Even if it's not actually happening yet, um, we, we don't want to keep repeating and reattracting what we've already got. We want these things to change. And the only way to change your reality is to change your thinking. I really want you to be able to change your life. I don't want you to change who you are essentially, but I promise you that these stories that you've picked up that aren't really true aren't really you. Okay, so that's not changing 
the essential you that's getting when we let these stories go it's getting back to the essential you and you'll know it will resonate sometimes it's a little like scary exciting when you go ooh maybe that's who i really am the the part i've been acting the opposite of like if you do something that you don't like then the opposite of that is probably who you really are and you're hiding who you really are and it's time to stop that is it going to happen overnight for some people it will but for most of us it takes some time it might even take a few years but don't give up keep to keep noticing the changes that you're making acknowledge them to yourself um, encourage yourself and don't ever stop all right, in my next video, I'm going to give you uh, six examples of how to change your thinking. Old thought, new thought. Old story, new story. I think that'll be in the next video. I really want the best for you. I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel, Helen McConnell. Good night, everybody.